with my new friend Gino today. We're gonna work on some leash training and a couple of other things, but as I normally do, I'm gonna start leash training with a focus exercise with the door where he will have a chance to show me that he communicates with me even though the door is opening and closing. I can tell he's already a little bit distracted with the sounds he's hearing outside. Quite normal. He's not barking. Great. He's not doing anything more than just being curious. Um, oh, we got some contact there. Not for long, but it's there. It's his first time. Oh, a little bit more there. I like that. I will definitely try treats a little bit later on. He just got here, so this might be quite a lot for him. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. affection is working quite well. I'm not trying treats right away because I think he's gonna need just a little bit of time to get more comfortable. Yes, with and sitting with me, with being here, comfortable enough to then eat and really get the most out of out of snacks. So for now, you saw he's giving me a little bit of eye contact. This is the very first time we're doing this, and oh, yes. I'm having it pay off with my attention, with my with my affection here. Yes, and as you're seeing on his own, he is naturally turning towards me a bit more. Oh. Yes. And it's almost like he's looking forward to it now. I've heard from his parents that he's very affectionate. So that actually works well. Because my affection is definitely a treat. I want to use it <laughs> as much as possible. That's when I work with them. So that way they'll look forward to it whenever we're doing something, especially something distracting. He's looking forward to receiving that affection, not just snacks. And it looks like even with just a few a few instances here just now, he has already picked up on the fact that that's something that is to be looked forward to. He went from staring at the door to now giving it his back. Now he's giving it space. So I'm gonna go to the next step of having the door go off. His ears went up, he just looked at it. But he, he came towards me, I really like that. He doesn't need to stare at me. He doesn't need to do anything more than that. He's a bit focused on it as he was, but now he's refocusing on me. <laughs> And he doesn't know yet what we're doing, so he's gonna try a bunch of different things. This is also a very mentally stimulating exercise, so I know this is gonna tire him out. But he's taking space, which I like. And I'm gonna go through the next step. He came and he's just looking at the door, more so out of curiosity than anything else. I think leash training is gonna go quite well with him, because it, it, it doesn't seem as though oh, he just gets completely trapped. More so goes, what's that? What, what just happened outside? He's just looking as any dog would. So no issues there. I love that he's naturally giving this space Beautiful. Yeah, he's sniffing, he's looking, he, he's just curious. Oh, yes. But then when he shows curiosity towards me, that's when I go off. That's when I say yes, that's when I have to say his name, that's when I touch him, that's when I talk to him. That's what I want to use my voice and my attention for, to let him know that he's done something well. So if we try this outside right now, it might not, not be as successful because there's so many more distractions. So right now we're just starting with these little distractions for him to let me know how it feels. He came, didn't go all the way through the door, he came and looked, but then also looked at me so I can tell that he's starting to communicate with me a little bit more. He hasn't gone all the way inside my apartment yet so he's a bit curious which is good. He's choosing curiosity over um, this which doesn't really mean anything right now and that's, that's the whole point. I don't want this to mean anything but he looked and then he he looked at me. Good job. He's doing quite well. He runs quite fast. Oh yes. He circles back towards me. He sits with me. He, he's realizing that this this little exercise is nothing more than for him and I to bond to be together. To share some attention with each other regardless of the door oh yeah it's beautiful do it again <laughs> yes. And although he, he doesn't exactly run towards me right away every single time, that's fine. He's choosing to take space, which is good. Rather than him trying to bolt out, he is taking space. I do have him on a leash just so that he can't exit the exercise entirely because I, I know this is something that he should be able to do to some extent. So the leash just says, we're in class right now. We're not leaving quite yet. But the moment the leash reaches his its end, he's coming back. I'm not pulling him. It's just saying you can't leave. But if you come and stay, there's a lot of great rewards as we're doing this exercise. He's just curious, nothing else there. So I think that curiosity without much of this kind of training has made it so when he does go for a walk, he's quite disconnected because he's more curious about what's going on. Yes, which again is not a bad thing, but there's quite a, a bit of a disconnect because we haven't necessarily yet <laughs> practiced these little moments where he shows us that he can give us his attention. We just have to have to practice it. We just have to go through it. We'll take a little break. I'm gonna let him just explore for a bit, get some water, and then we'll we'll try this uh, again. Chino hasn't showed me much interest in food. Again, it, it, it's very normal. It makes sense. It's his first time here. So I'm going to see how he does when I just place a couple of treats here. I'm going to see if this gets his interest towards, towards food. She's coming towards me, which is great. This is also great for mental enrichment. Also good for some confidence building. 
that he's got to figure out. If it's too difficult, I'll help him out. Let's see if he's just taking a break or he's giving up or he's just taking some time to figure out. Yeah, don't see him being too driven. I know he wants to do things, but I think because he's finding it somewhat difficult that he's taking some space and, and trying to think it through. I'll put it on the rug here to see if maybe this makes it a little bit easier for him. It's not the easiest. Okay, there we go. He's using his tongue. I just want him to try. I don't need him to figure this out fully. I just want him to give it a, a go. And just because of that, it's tough for even me. So I'm going to flip it, make it a bit easier for him. Because he's not too driven. I don't want to discourage him, even though he's actually trying. So this will be a bit easier for him. But I love doing this kind of exercise with all of my dogs and, and their food so that they get to use their brain. There we go. And I have a lot of different boxes, cartons that I can use. But for now, this is good enough for him. When he's going out, he's using his nose. Then he's got to use his tongue. He can try using his paws. But for now, this is good. Here's another interactive toy. I know he likes moving around quite a bit. So perhaps this one's also a bit more up at his alley where he needs to just nudge and get the treats out. The main reason I'm providing him with these, it's not to keep him occupied. It's, it's to give him something that I know he can do and feel good about. That's going to directly tie to when we're actually going for a walk for when we're doing a lot of that training where it's going to require a lot of his attention towards me. And I want him to feel as though doing things with me like these kinds of games makes him feel good. So if I have that foundation, Foundation, not only to give him things to do but to feel good about he's gonna feel good about our interactions together which will make it so we'll have more of a bond on walk I'll have more of his attention on walks and he'll feel confident because he's problem solving right now he's gonna have to figure out how to get that toy out of there he's going to to feel good as a result because it's his first time I'm definitely gonna help him out a bit it takes quite a few skills to, to get it out of there, a, a bit of confidence. And again, it's his first time here. It's it's his first time doing a lot of this. So I don't want to expect or ask for too much just yet. I want him feeling good and I want to tie that association with, with me. And then we can focus on more challenging training as well. Okay, we're gonna work on our leash training. We're gonna go on to the next level, which would be working with the door wide open. I am not expecting him in this case to stay put or to give me a lot of his attention. I'm gonna see what I'm able to get. Hopefully some good behavior. If I am not able to get much, I'll walk in and out with him for him to show me that he is with me. So I'm gonna see what he does here. He chooses to come back. If I just walk back, if I just come back inside, he does quite well. I'm gonna reward that. Not much attention. Here. given to me yes but he did come back i think if he doesn't eat it might just be that he's a little bit concerned about what's going on if he does eat then he's feeling good wonderful he's feeling good even though the door is wide open i'm gonna have a snack eating all of it perfect he's taking his time too which i like he's not rushing to go back towards the outside so this time i'm gonna just wait here i'm gonna see what he does on his own if i don't instigate the coming back inside he's just curious Again, he's not doing anything wrong. He's just curious about what's outside. But after enough instances of this and us going out and walking where there's not much of a connect and he's got that much of cur uh, curiosity, okay, look back. then that can of course make it so walking him is not as enjoyable and seems as though he's got no, uh, no manners. But he, he's not pulling me to go there. I'm actually gonna sit here. I'm just gonna wait and see what he does. He's not really engaging with me a whole lot yet. He's really just curious. He's not. Oh, he. <laughs> oh, he. Hello. Hello. So again, I can always use treats, but I can use my affection as well when he does give me his attention. I encourage him to to want to do it again. It's <laughs> oh, you came back, good boy. So I don't feel the need yet to do the exercise where I go in and out. I think that can be the next step for now. I'm happy him showing me that he's he's quite uh, good at being able to just come back on his own and of course getting many 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 rewards for it. I'm gonna give him a few snacks that maybe even go that way. See how he feels. See if he even feels a need to head out or maybe come back and get some more attention from me. We'll see. The main thing here is that it has to pay off for him to give me his attention, especially when things start to get more distracting. But he's curious, he hears things, probably smells some things. Some people cooking food. <laughs> and he just chose to come back. Wonderful. When the door was closed, he was giving me much more attention, a lot more eye contact. That is normal. It was a lot less distracting. I think he's finding this to be not as exciting because otherwise I don't think he'd be focusing on the little ball there. So it's a good thing. He's choosing to do something else as opposed to focus on what's going on here. So because of that, I'm gonna go through the next level with him and we're gonna head out. <laughs> 
Don't forget the importance of doing playful physical games like this. This is how they play with each other. They use their whole body, their mouth even. He's just really being playful. You notice how the moment I stop moving, he tries something else. He's still very much a pup, but this kind of game is normal to them. But the biggest advantage of this is not that it's gonna tire him out. Yes, it'll mellow him out a bit. It'll make him feel better, but more than anything, it's gonna make him feel all those good things towards me because he's doing that with me. And that's what I need when I actually take him for a walk, when I ask him to listen, when I ask him to behave the way I want. I want him to want to do all those good things for me. <laughs> he likes to use his mouth. That's how they play. And you see, he doesn't do anything more than I'm doing with my hand. It's just with him, it's with his mouth. That's how they interact. But regardless, whether it's with his mouth or his body or regardless of the type of physical game that you choose to do with him, doing it on a regular, it's good for him. It's good for that bond. It's really, really, really important so that when you're facing distractions outside, he will have a much easier time choosing you and just wanting to be with you. Okay, we're gonna work out. We're gonna see how we do. Not expecting a whole lot of eye contact. Oh, but I got it there. That was good. And then I'm gonna just go back. Oh, okay, he's with me. Oh, a bit of eye contact there as well. He is with me. And then we're gonna go back out. He's checking in. Let's go. I give him a little verbal cue, a little nudge there, because he doesn't know what this is quite yet. Oh, he's paying quite a lot of attention to me. There I say he's even enjoying it. I have a snack here to let him know that he's doing something good. Yes. The main instance when it comes to leash training, when we're going the, the route that I want to go, I'll say his name, Chino, and then we go. I can make a little sound just to, just to help him encourage him, but if I'm saying his name, I'm going to make it happen. Chino. Yes. <laughs> and of course, a nice reward follows that. But he's doing quite well. He's giving me quite a, a lot of attention, especially when I ask for it, which is fine. This is still day one for him. His very first day is doing a lot of this in a brand new place. This is not the usual for him. He's curious about things, but a lot more into who he's doing it with. A lot more into who is holding the leash. <laughs> a lot more into what's going on around him as far as me. So this is quite good. It's a great, great, great start. Yes. He went towards the tricky treat ball a moment ago, so I'm gonna go back in, give a moment to just enjoy that, and then we'll do some more. Let's go! Oh, <laughs> good job. Yes, you. Good job, buddy. Okay, here we are. We're heading out. This is where I expect to see my little friend Chino struggle a little bit more. And even though we're working on leash training, he's not a heavy puller. He, he doesn't get too focused on something that I know he's not necessarily fully focused on me. So there's quite a bit of a disconnect, which means that we just want to work on our bond. That will naturally make it so he's a lot more receptive to training on leash, to just walking together. But so far, that's what I've noticed. It's a dog that's curious and at the same time, as a result, distracted from the person holding a leash because that bond is not really fully there in that way where if I call him or if I do something with him, I know that he's going to give me his attention. But we'll still work through it regardless. So just here, for example, where I've let him sniff a little bit and I want to keep moving now that he's gone to do a bit of what he needs, which is just sniff around, get to know the new environment. Environment, I can then ask for what I want. I just need to make sure that when I ask for it, I make it happen. That way, if I'm saying his name or any cue like a come or let's go, he knows what that means. So next time that he stops around, I like that he stopped on his own and then came to me. I have him booked to me just so that it's a little bit easier for me to hold my phone and also then give him affection with my other hand. He seems to be quite mindful of where I'm at. I don't know if it's because some of the exercises that we've done or maybe it's he is not too distracted. He's doing quite well, but I'm going to let him sniff a little bit more. I'm going to call him one. He has to sniff a little bit and he's actually paying a lot of attention to me. He's keeping his, his attention towards me. He's a bit distracted by the stroller over there. So for some reason, the stroller kind of worried him a little bit. It's normal. Just a bit of concern towards the stroller. Not sure what that is, but we'll keep walking, see what more we can get out of him. He's a little bit unsure about people in, in general. So that's more of a socialization thing rather than training. When it comes to leash training, I just want him to come when I call him. I want him to be with me. When it comes to socialization, that can be a little bit more about how he's feeling inside. And if he's not feeling too good about people, we definitely want to work on that. But it's going to be a bit of a different uh, approach. So as I walk with him, I'll get to see how he feels towards people in general, because if he's struggling walking because he's not feeling too good, that means we probably need to work a bit more on socializing him, building some confidence, some good emotions and then adding the actual skills of leash training so i'm gonna walk with him a little bit more i'm just gonna let him walk on on his own for now where i'm not too focused on him walking next to me i think he needs exercises where we're just walking past things so that he can gain a bit of confidence by knowing that if he walks towards something and he's a little bit unsure i can guide him i can also give him a moment for him to try to figure out on his own but he definitely needs a bit of exposure as far as just getting a bit of confidence coach you know 
so long as he's walking, we're gonna keep moving forward. If ever he puts the brakes, I'll definitely go the other way. I don't wanna force him. Chino, good job, <laughs> good job. Let's go, come on. There you go, that was pretty good. He was a bit concerned there. So it was good that he only got to be on the stroller for a little bit and then we keep moving. Yes, good job. 